tonight. Manila Inferno. Large fires break out in Philippines shanty town destroying hundreds of shanty homes in Manila port slum. Influential choice. President elect Donald Trump picks billionaire investor Scott Besant as treasury secretary. Max's victory. Verstappen claims fourth consecutive F1 title in Las Vegas Grand Prix. And new born world. UNC graduate student discovers youngest ever transiting planet. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Avadarna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Vinuth Varnasuriya. Well, a very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We are here to bring you key stories across the globe over the weekend and for this Monday. And we begin today in the Philippines. A massive fire tore through a coastal shanty town in the Philippine capital, leaving at least 2,000 families homeless as flames billowed for nearly eight hours. Well, authorities are still investigating the cause of the fire disaster, but blazes in Manila slums are often sparked by faulty electrical wiring or gas canisters. Some thousand houses in Isla Puting Bato, near the Manila North Harbour port, have burned down so far. These houses were home to around 2,000 families. Now, Manila Public Information Office also said that some 3,000 people in the Tondo district of Manila have been evacuated. The city's fire department said that the fire began at around 8 a.m. and is speculated to have started on the second floor of one of the homes. 36 fire trucks, four fire boats and two helicopters have been deployed to extinguish the fire. The houses in Isla Puting Bato neighborhood are built very closely and constructed from mostly light flammable materials, making them prone to fire. The country said the COP29 summit in Baku adopted a $300 billion a year global finance target to help developing nations cope with impacts of climate change. But the deal, however, was criticized as woefully insufficient by its intended recipients. Agreement was clinched in overtime at the two-week conference in Azerbaijan's capital. It commits rich countries to providing $300 billion a year by 2035 in climate financing. That's a boost from the previous deal of $100 billion annually by 2020. That earlier goal was met two years late in 2022 and expires next year. United Nations climate chief Simon Steele hailed the agreement as one that would keep the clean energy boom growing and urged developed nations to keep their promises this time. The summit cut to the heart of the debate over the financial responsibility of industrialized countries to compensate others for worsening damage from climate change after their historic use of fossil fuels caused the bulk of greenhouse gas emissions. It also laid bare divisions between developing nations reeling from costs of storms, floods and droughts and wealthy governments facing tight domestic budgets and surging geopolitical tensions. Negotiations had been due to finish on Friday but ran into overtime as representatives from nearly 200 countries struggled to reach consensus. Some developing countries and island nations walked out briefly in frustration on Saturday. The final deal also failed to set out detailed steps for how countries will act on last year's climate summit pledge to transition away from fossil fuels and triple renewable energy capacity this decade. Moving on to Mexico now, six people were killed and at least 10 others injured when gunmen opened fire at a bar. The shooting took place in the coastal province of Tabasco, which is struggling with recent increase in violence. Authorities said that armed persons entered a DBAR bar in the city of Villa Hermosa, looking for a specific person before shots were fired. Now, local authorities investigating the shooting said that the incident may not be related to organized crime, while there have been no reports of arrests yet. We'll time for a short commercial break. More world news coming right after this. On the road to the White House tonight, Donald Trump picked investor Scott Besant as U.S. Treasury Secretary, ending the suspense over the cabinet position with vast influence over economic, regulatory and international affairs. Besant will take his investing knowledge down a rarefied career path only a few other prominent Wall Street luminaries have followed. 
The appointment has vast influence over economic, regulatory and international affairs. Wall Street has been watching Trump's pick closely, given his plans to remake global trade through tariffs and extend and potentially expand tax cuts enacted during his first term. Some strategists said Besant's nomination was a relief, as he understands markets and his appointment could reduce the chance of severe tariffs. 62-year-old Besant, who did not immediately respond to a request for comment, has spent his career in finance and gives Wall Street an advocate for tax reform and deregulation, particularly to spur more bank lending and energy production, as noted in a recent opinion piece he wrote for the Wall Street Journal. The choice came after days of deliberations by Trump as he sorted through a shifting list of candidates. Sources said Besant spent time at Trump's Mar-a-Lago home in Florida, providing economic advice a proximity to the president-elect that may have helped him prevail. As he announced the nomination in a statement released on Truth Social, Trump said Besant was widely respected as one of the world's foremost international investors and geopolitical and economic strategists. Also in the U.S., heavy rain, flooding and snow are hitting the West. The record-setting weather is swelling rivers and triggering mudslides. Meanwhile, in the Northeast, some areas are digging out from major snowstorms ahead of busy Thanksgiving travel rush. Parts of the West Coast underwater as another round of unrelenting rain and heavy snow hit states from California to Colorado. The record-setting system swelling rivers and triggering mudslides. In Sonoma County, California, floodwaters forcing rescues. Authorities say one person was found dead in a car this morning. If you see water turn around, there's always another way you can go. Across wine country, some vineyard fields completely washed out. In Washington state, customers warned some will be in the dark until Monday, after storms with hurricane force winds earlier this week knocked out power to more than 100,000 people. On the other side of the country, New Jersey digging out from one of its largest November snowstorms in history. A forecast set to clash with the nearly 80 million people expected to get away for Thanksgiving. In Chicago, William Edwards and his family started their trip early, hoping to avoid the worst crowds. Well, updating you now on the war in Gaza. Israeli trucks battered southern Lebanon and the outskirts of the capital Beirut, killing at least five medics as ground troops clashed with Hezbollah fighters in the south. After evacuation orders in southern Beirut were issued on social media, Israeli strikes turned this multi-story building into dust. At least five medics have been killed as rockets continued to batter southern Lebanon and the outskirts of the capital on Friday. Israeli ground troops have also clashed with Hezbollah fighters in the south as Israel's intense military campaign against the Iran-backed armed group fails to relent. It has tempered hopes that a US envoy could reach an imminent ceasefire. A US mediator said earlier this week that a truce was within our grasp after visiting Beirut. They then travelled to meet Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu before returning to Washington, according to the news outlet Axios. Hostilities between Israel and Hezbollah escalated dramatically when Israel ramped up its strikes in late September and sent ground troops into Lebanon in October. Their troops have pushed deeper to the edges of Hayam, a town some four miles from the border. Lebanese security sources told Israeli troops have also advanced in a string of villages to the west. They said Israel was most likely trying to isolate Hayam ahead of a major attack on the town. Israeli strikes on two other villages killed a total of five medics from a rescue force affiliated with Hezbollah, the Lebanese health ministry said. More than 200 medics have been killed by Israeli strikes over the past year, the health ministry said. Israel says it aims to secure the return home of tens of thousands of people evacuated from Israel's north due to rocket attacks by Hezbollah, which began firing across the border in support of Hamas at the start of the Gaza war in October 2023. An Israeli rabbi who went missing in the United Arab Emirates has been found murdered. Well, UAE authorities arrested three people suspected of murdering the Israeli Moldovan rabbi. Israel, however, denounced the incident as a heinous anti-Semitic terrorist act. The body of Rabbi Zvi Kogan was found as tensions in the region continue to rise, with reports of Israeli strikes killing dozens in Lebanon and Gaza over the weekend. 
Rabbi Kogan managed a kosher supermarket in Dubai, where he went missing on Thursday. He's seen in front of the store in this social media video, filmed two days before he disappeared. He also worked for an Orthodox Jewish group in the UAE. Netanyahu said on Sunday his country would, quote, act with all means to bring justice to the murderers. Kogan's body was found in the Emirati city of Al Ain, which borders Oman, though it is not clear if he was killed there or elsewhere. Emirati and Israeli authorities have not said who was involved in the killing or what the motive might have been. The region remains gripped by escalating conflicts as Israel's military issued new evacuation orders to residents in areas of Gaza City, setting off another wave of displacement on Sunday. Israel also continued exchanging fire with the Lebanese armed group Hezbollah. According to Israeli rescue workers, Hezbollah launched more than 200 rockets into northern and central Israel on Sunday, injuring several people, while strikes by Israel's forces were seen hitting a suburb in Lebanon's capital of Beirut. A powerful Israeli airstrike the day before killed at least 84 people, according to Lebanese authorities. Now bringing the latest on the Russia-Ukrainian war. Russia claimed that its forces attacked Ukrainians' equipment assembly points, while Ukraine reported that its troops tried to stop the Russian army from breaking through their defense over the past 24 hours. Now to get more updates on this story, we have other than the world news special correspondent Minori Sagaria, who is joining us from Kursk in Russia. Minoli, has the situation been escalating between the two countries with these recent moves taken by Russia and Ukrainian governments? Yes, Vinod. The Russian Defense Ministry stated that the Russian army attacked Ukraine's manpower and equipment assembly areas in 141 regions as well as multiple Ukrainian military airports, drone production workshops and storage points. Russia's air defense forces also shot down 44 Ukrainian drones on the day. On the same day, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine in a war report said that 122 battles took place in the frontline areas and the situation on the front lines was still remained tense, especially in the directions of the Kurakov and Prokovs in eastern, Russia, in eastern Ukraine. The Ukrainian army was taking all measures to prevent the Russian army from breaking through adding that it continued its military operation in western Russia's Kursk region that it started in August. Meanwhile, NATO and Ukraine are set to hold emergency talks after Russia attacked a central city with an experimental hypersonic ballistic missile that escalated the tensions that had been going on for more than three decades with Poland's prime minister commenting on the events as the conflict is entering a decisive phase and taking on very dramatic dimensions. Ukraine's parliament cancelled a session as security was tightened following Russian strike on a military facility in the city of Dnipro. In a stark warning to the West, President Vladimir Putin said in a nationally televised speech that the attack with the intermediate range Orange Nick missile was in retaliation for Kyiv's use of US and British longer range missiles capable of striking deeper into Russian territory. Putin also sounded highly confident when he said Western air defense systems would be powerless to stop the new missile. Back to you, Vinod. That was other than the world news special correspondent Minoli Sagaria joining us from Kursk in Russia. <laughs> A jury decided that the Irish mixed martial arts fighter Conor McGregor sexually assaulted a woman at a party in Dublin in 2018 and must pay her nearly $260,000 in damages. He has been ordered to pay her over $250,000 in damages. The jury reached its verdict in the civil trial at Ireland's High Court after about six hours of deliberation. The plaintiff, Nikita Hand, alleged that McGregor and another man, James Lawrence, sexually assaulted her on December 9, 2018. The jury found that Lawrence did not assault Hand. Hand said that she and a friend made contact with McGregor, who she knew, after a work Christmas party. She said they were driven by McGregor to a party in a penthouse room of a South Dublin hotel where drugs and alcohol were consumed. She said McGregor took her to a bedroom there and sexually assaulted her. McGregor denied the allegation and said he had consensual sex with Hand. He also denied causing bruising to the plaintiff. After the verdict, McGregor posted on X that he planned to appeal. Speaking outside the court, 
Han said she was overwhelmed by the support she had received and that she felt vindicated. Tony D. Combs will remain in custody for at least several more days while a U.S. judge considers his bid to be released on a $50 million bail from the Brooklyn jail where he has been held for 10 weeks. Sean D. Combs is accused of sexually abusing women. A bail hearing from music mogul Sean Diddy Combs ended with no decision from the judge, who will consider his bid to be released from the Brooklyn jail where he has spent the past 10 weeks. Combs will remain in custody for now after his lawyers proposed a $50 million bail package. Friday's hearing lasted nearly two hours, during which Combs' family sat in the second row of the courtroom. The judge promised that he would rule on his bid for home detention promptly. Combs has already been denied bail three times since his arrest, with multiple judges citing a risk he might tamper with witnesses. On September 17th, the rapper and producer pleaded not guilty to charges he used his business empire, including his record label Bad Boy Entertainment, to sexually abuse women. Prosecutors said the abuse included having women take part in recorded sexual performances called freak-offs, with male sex workers who were sometimes transported across state lines. Combs has denied wrongdoing, and his lawyers have argued the sexual activity described by prosecutors was consensual. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news coming on the other side. Welcome back. Max Verstappen wins the Formula One World Championship for the fourth consecutive time, beating Lando Norris with two races to spare. Verstappen, a four-time champion of the world. This morning, Max Verstappen is the 2024 F1 world champion, clinching his fourth title in a row after coming out on top in an exhilarating head-to-head -head race through the iconic Vegas Strip as cars zip by some of the most recognizable Vegas hotels. That is four in a row, Max. Four in a row, congratulations. The drivers reaching speeds of more than 200 miles per hour as they zoomed past thousands of fans in attendance, including a smattering of celebrities. And while Verstappen did place fifth in Vegas for Red Bull, he ruled the road, hitting the championship jackpot thanks to the point system in F1 races. But for the most part, Verstappen played it safe while also taking a few risks. He just needed to stay ahead of his chief rival, Lando Norris, who finished sixth. Meanwhile, George Russell taking home the checkered flag at the Las Vegas Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton putting the pedal to the metal, making an epic comeback drive to claim second place from 10th on the grid. Driver of the day for uh, Lewis Hamilton. 27-year-old Verstappen now moving into elite company. Time for the world champion. Joining just a select few other drivers who have won four championships. Madison Barber, a grad student at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, was researching young transiting systems in the space when she made a remarkable discovery, the youngest known transiting planet. The planet, nicknamed as TIDYE1b, is estimated to be 3 million years old and considered young for a planet. The exoplanet is about the age of a two-week-old baby in planeteers. Barber used data from NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite to observe the brightness of stars over time. During the observations, Barber noticed some little dips in brightness, indicating that a transiting planet may be passing near Earth. TIDYE-1b has a radius about 10 times larger than the Earth and has approximately 30% of the mass of Jupiter, according to a paper published in Nature. Astronomers noted some unusual characteristics of the star, which is located relatively close to Earth at 160 parseconds or 522 light-years away. The outer protoplanetary disk surrounding the star is misaligned and the star has a depleted inner disk. The combination of these unique features allowed scientists to observe the transiting protoplanet. Astronomers are still learning about the planet. Barber added they were able to calculate the upper mass limit by looking at the radial velocity of the star, which is the movement of a star over time and measuring little wiggles in that movement. And with that, we wrap today's bulletin. We'll be back with the latest updates from around the world tomorrow. So stay tuned as we've got Anuradha Vikram Singh joining you next on the Nightly Business Report. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.